this is your sequel book. If someone isn't familiar with the whole series of your books, what can you share, like a brief little synopsis? Of course. There are two books in the series. The first one is An Ember in the Ashes. The second one is A Torch Against the Night. Um, Ember is about a girl named Laya um, and a soldier named Elias. Laya is fighting to save her family, her brother, who's been taken by soldiers of the Empire where she lives. And Elias is an Empire soldier, and he's trying to sort of escape this life that he's being forced to, um, to live. And so um, Torch really continues their journey from the first book um, deeper into the Empire and into new danger and new challenges. If somebody hasn't read the first book, can they jump into the second, or should they really start from the beginning? I think they should really start from the beginning. I think that the character sort of motivations and where they're coming from and what they want um, are more um, sort of uh, understandable when you've read the first book. Do you have anything that inspired the either the characters or the whole series? Yeah, I mean, I was inspired by so many different things. Um, I was inspired by news stories that I read um, while working um, at the Washington Post. I was a copy editor there. Um, I was inspired by my own childhood and like feelings of sort of being powerless and being voiceless as a kid and wanting to kind of represent stories where people feel that way. Um, and, you know, just sort of the daily world around me and what people go through on kind of a daily basis. Particularly with Torch, I was inspired by um, current world events. Whenever you write, do you know the ending or do you figure it out as you go along? I mostly know the ending. Sometimes my characters do strange things and they surprise me and I'm like, why are you doing this to me? But then I just have to roll with the story. When somebody gets to the end of this book, without giving it away, are we going to expect another one or is this the end? of the series. No, there are two more books. Um, books, yay! Uh, books three and four, um, and they are due out in 2018 and 2019. Do you already have an idea of where it's going to go, or are you kind of going to figure it out along the way? I have a really clear idea of where it's going to go. I actually had sort of their, the characters' whole lives planned out very early on, so I'm just sort of figuring out what I'm going to share and what I'm not going to. I know you can't talk about it, but there is a movie in the works, in case you haven't heard about that, so that's going to be so exciting. It is really wonderful. I hope that I get a chance to see them um, come to life. The um, the movie is with uh, Paramount Pictures, um, and so I, you know, I, I do love Paramount. I think they do great work. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that everything works out. There are so many things that have to go right for a movie to happen. Who's your favorite character to write in the story? I like writing all of them. Um, I do. Uh, even like the evil characters, I, I I weirdly can sort of. I think maybe not weird because I you know created them, so I have to kind of understand them from all of their you know various facets. I think I relate most to Elias, probably, but I do like writing everyone's point of view. Your style is super cute. I love all of the jewelry. <laughs> Whenever it comes to, you know, designing the characters in your story, do you imagine what they look like in your mind? I try to imagine what they look like in my mind, and I also make heavy use of Pinterest. <laughs> so I go onto Pinterest and I find people who I think look like them, and clothes that I think match what they would wear. Um, I find armor from, like, video games and from movies. Like the 300 or um, you know Dragon Age like you know just like or like Assassin's Creed like armors and weapons that I think would match and then I use that to kind of fill in the, the empty places where you know I can't quite imagine things and then I have a full picture. Who is your favorite heroine from literature? Probably Hermione Granger. I think that Hermione is such a badass. She's really smart. She always stands up to her friends when they're being ridiculous um, and she's just such a great feminist icon. She's wonderful. If you were escaping through the desert, who would you bring with you? In life, if my kids were safely tucked away somewhere, I'd probably bring my husband because he's very, like, knowledgeable about how to survive and that sort of thing. If I had to pick a fictional character, totally Elias, because I'd be like, dude, you got to get me through this. Like, I do not know what I'm doing. What's your favorite message from your story? I really just have one that I would love for readers to take away, and that is this idea that hope is um, such a strong and powerful force in our world that it's stronger than hate and it's stronger than fear. Um, it might be, might be the most powerful force we know. If you had any magical powers, what would they be? I would love the power to transform into a talking dragon. Dragon. I've thought about this a lot, um, like probably way too much. When I would be a dragon, which would be wonderful, um, I could fly. Um, I could crisp my enemies if I have any. If you have any enemies, I could crisp them too. Um, and I could go visit my family in faraway places. <laughs> And like carry like my kids with me and be like, come on guys, hop on my back, let's go to grandma's house. Very practical requests for a magical power. I think it's a good, I think it's a good thing to have. 